One day I was shuffling a deck of cards to play a card game, and as I shuffled it occurred to me that not only was I changing the deck, I was also changing my future. With one particular shuffle, I might win the card game. With another shuffle, I might lose. And yet another shuffle, it would be really close, but then I'd still lose. Yet there was no way for me to actually see what the deck looked like, or what my future was, except to play the game out. And I got thinking about that. What if I could write a program that would visualize how the cards are arranged? And that's what I have here today. I wrote this program, took a deck of physical cards, wrote 1 through 52 on the cards, shuffled them, wrote down the sequence, and then repeated that seven additional times. I plug those numbers into here, and we can use that to see kind of how does a deck rearrange itself as you shuffle. On the left is the deck that gets shuffled, and on the right is a reference for how it originally was. Let's add some connecting lines, and we'll go into the first shuffle. So right away you can see how cards tend to shift up and down in the deck in position in the very first shuffle. Up at the top I've got some numbers that, generally speaking, starting distance is the average of how far each card has moved from its starting spot, and neighbor distance is how far each card's neighbor is from its original location. So we'll go ahead and shuffle through here. Now it's been mathematically demonstrated that it only takes an average of about seven shuffles to fully randomize the deck. Let's go ahead and do an eighth one just for good measure. And there's our final arrangement, nice and broken up. Though you can see that hearts and diamonds are kind of favored towards the beginning while clubs and spade are favored towards the end. But that's with a nice clean shuffle. What if I'm being a little bit lazy when I shuffle? Let's take a look at that. Sloppy riffle shuffle. You can see here that cards are tending to shift more up and down, and that some will stay in place before deciding to move. But again, by the eighth shuffle, we've got a pretty randomized deck here. Okay, what about overhand shuffling? That's not usually a very good way, but it is kind of flashy at times. You can see here that cards move in very large chunks and clumps before getting broken up. But, by the end, it's a fairly well randomized deck. Now let's take a look at the smooshing shuffle. This is a very easy way and very good way to move around cards. But it bugs me that that ace of diamonds isn't moving at the very bottom. Let's do this properly. There we go. That is a randomized deck. Now just for comparison's sake, what if the computer randomizes the cards instead of physical ones? It comes out like this, and you'll see that it looks very different than our previous shuffles. Because cards are bouncing around in order based purely off mathematical algorithms and not the physical movement of uh, cards. And there's our final arrangement. So here we have the final outcome of all the different types of shuffling. They're all fairly randomized and they all give a slightly different deck, but only because of randomness, not because of the type of shuffling. Let's go ahead and end this video with a card game near and dear to my heart, Magic the Gallery. Broadly speaking, cards are divided into three categories. Lands, creatures, and everything else. You need lands to summon creatures. Creatures are needed to fight, and all the other cards are used to support your creatures. Thereby, it makes it very difficult if you're getting a lot of lands, but not many creatures, or vice versa. As such, in casual games, players will often do what's known as seeding the deck. That is where they will interleave the different types of cards together evenly before shuffling the deck. What is that actually needed? Let's go ahead and use our original normal riffle shuffle and we'll go through and look at it. So you can see at the end here, this isn't a bad starting hand. 
four lands plus one creature and two other cards. That would be a good starting hand. It would be a little difficult drawing four lands in a row waiting for those two creatures to come up, but it, it could be worse. What if we use a different shuffle though? Let's do that. Here's our sloppy riffle shuffle again. We'll run through this. That's a better arrangement. It'd be a little difficult having only four lands early in the game, but this is a nice blend right here. Well, what does that compare to a non-seated deck? So let's put this away. We'll distribute a non-seated deck. This is where we start with 17 lands, 17 creatures, and 18 of the other cards. Using that same shuffle we just had, the sloppy riffle, we can see a pretty similar breakdown in arrangement. Three at the very beginning, and then this is a very nice blend of lands and other cards. Just for comparison's sake, let's take a look at what, it, what happens when we let it be completely randomized by the computerized shuffle. As you can see, no matter what, you're always going to have a certain amount of clumping just due to the fact that card types are broken down into the main three categories. Still, that's a very nice stretch of cards right there, and that would be a great opening hand. Well, thank you for watching. Is there any other way I should visualize this, or any math mistakes I made? Let me know in the comments. In the meantime, here's a visualization of what it looks like to do 5200 pickup. Oh, that's gonna take a while to clean up. You might want to come back later.